okay uh, i am shant priratna from it center uh, as you know uh, this is ict 1001 information and communication technology course right so actually this course contains two main parts right that is a theory lectures and the practical sessions right so this is the uh, first module uh, introduction to it or information and communication technology right okay the first one is uh, what is data and what is information and what is the difference between data and information simply so data can be defined as a raw facts right so we call data uh, a raw facts right so data can be represented using a characters like alphabets digits say 0 to 9 or using special characters like this right so what is information information is the process data right so information is the process data on which decision and actions are based right so by uh, using informations we can take some decisions and actions right so information has some meaningful values to the receiver right so uh, the basic property of the information is a meaningful value right so data and informations are relative to the source right so that means uh, uh, if you say uh, a particular thing is data right so the same thing can be information uh, with respect to the uh, source right so for example if you say uh, marks for the ICT course or ICT subject, so simply that is data. But uh, the point of the uh, lecturer, right? So with respect to the lecturer or the examiner, right? So what he or she has to do, she or he has to do some process uh, to create uh, marks, right? So to they have to uh, evaluate the paper. Then only they can have final marks. So, with respect to the uh, examiner, marks is information. With respect to the student, that is uh, data, right? Because uh, he or she, uh, actually, it's he or she has to, uh, what you call, answer for the questions, but uh, uh, he, or the, uh, uh, he or she uh, is not doing a process to uh, create the marks, right? So, data and information are relative the source right okay so data is raw facts so data are raw facts the information is process data so that's the summary okay then how to store data in a computer right so computer store data in the form of bits right so bits are usually we call zero and one right so bits mean actually binary digits so you know binary number system in binary number system we have uh, two symbols zero and one so uh, we call those the binary digits in uh, computer then in computer data is in the form bits all right so both zero and one represent voltage level all right so usually a uh, zero represent using zero voltage and one represent in say five voltage like five right so in human readable way it can be referred as file so computer use a binary language but it is not readable to the uh, human being so therefore in human readable way it can be referred as files right so many file type uh, format uh, are there right so you know uh, there are number of file types and formats right actually a file format is a standard way that information is encoded for storage in a computer file right so for example if it is text file there are so many file types right doc or docx txt likewise data file you may have a dat file xml file csv file so likewise so there are a number of file types and file uh, extensions so file formats right so you know these file types in computer right and then next one is what is computing right so how can we define the term called computing 
actually if there is any goal oriented activity with data are called completing right so there is a particular goal and then there are some activities uh, are with data then we call computing any goal oriented activity with data called computing right so in that activities right so we have to design building processing structuring managing various kind of information right so that is computing the next one is what is computer what is computer right think all of you have uh, some idea about computer right but if you ask to define the term the computer the device computer so this is how you can define it computer is some electronic device that manipulate information or data according to the a set of instruction set of instruction right so that is without the uh, set of instructions computer cannot do anything right so basically those instruction or set of instructions are called a program right a program right usually we call program right so depending on the program right so or the, uh, the according to the program computer can uh, manipulate the information and then that is electronic device right so you have to highlight these three points when you define the term computer which is uh, uh, electronic device and this is the process that is manipulation information according to the set of instruction then we call set of instructions uh, is program right so that is computer has the ability to retrieve process and store the data right so so uh, here we can uh, summarize that uh, points like this right so there should be an input that is we call retrieve data right then the computer can process those data right according to the set of instruction then set of instructions are called program right then the information that is the process data can be output or store inside the computer storage devices right so later on we can discuss computer storage devices right okay the next one is computer system right actually computer system can be categorized into three main sections those are hardware software and liveware right so let's take one by one right what is hardware actually a hardware is a physical component of our computer such as a system unit a mouse keyboard so those are referred as hardware right so basically hardware means what is a tangible right so this is the basic property of the hardware that is we can touch it right so so that is something that can be touched and felt right so that is what we call tangible right so so these are hardware right so uh, power supply system ram the motherboard processor ram right so those are uh, called hardware and the next one is software what is software so software is a collection of executable programs with a proper documentation and configuration files right so what is program so i told you that a program means a set of instruction right so actually the computer process data according to the set of instruction so these those set of instructions are called program right so software mean software is a collection of executable programs with a proper documentation so all uh, that is a documentation should be there so software is collection of executable programs with proper documentation and configuration files right so that is software so without software computer cannot do anything so by using the computer using the software that makes the computer work so software is the executing uh, uh, elements of the uh, uh, computer so without software the computer cannot do anything so basically these softwares are stored in a secondary storage devices right so let's discuss uh, storage devices later right so usually software held as 
secondary stone ranges right so the software loaded into the main memory so basically we use ram as a main memory so software loaded or copied into the ram as uh, when executing time right so during the executing time the software are loaded into the main memory right so when it is required those software are uh, loaded into the main memories of our computer right so the main property of the software uh, uh, compared to the hard drives the software are intangible right so that is the opposite of the hardware that is you cannot be touch you cannot touch and feel right so those are intangible right so you know there are a number of softwares right so uh, actually at the end of this uh, lecture uh, we can discuss the software types right okay and the next one is liveware so liveware means the people using computers i mean the person who use the computer referred as a live right so based on the need for a human or live or to operate the system using hardware software right so without live computer cannot be operated right like this right so live means the uh, people who use the computer right okay the next one is what is information and communication technology so what is information and communication technology or ICT so use of computer system for storing retrieving and sending information we call that is information and communication technologies there right okay the next one is main parts of the of computer right so you know these parts right so I'm not going to uh, describe one by one right so this is a uh, system unit right and then this is monitor the keyboard is there and then uh, pointing device mouse and then sometimes we may have external <coughs> uh, flash memory card reader right and then microphone will be there right mic and then some uh, speakers may be there printer is there right so likewise so there are number of parts of the computer right just you can refer this material right okay and then so this is the main uh, part of uh, the this lecture that is the architecture of the cpu architecture of central processing unit right so actually in central processing unit there are three main components we call a control unit alu or arithmetic logic unit and register right control unit ALU and registers right and then we may have uh, another memory right so we call that is main memory main memory right and then the input and output devices are uh, connected to the CPU right input device usually we are uh, uh, connected using this uh, arrowhead into the CPU and then the arrowhead to the uh, output device is actually like into this direction that is out the information from the computer or the processing unit right okay let's take one by one right so the cpu is actually the brain inside the computer so that is the brain inside the computer central processing unit and the main components of the cpu is so you know control unit alu and registers so the purpose of the control unit is direct the operation of the processor right the control unit control the operation of the processor right and then imagine that the control units control the communication and coordination between input output devices right so control the communication and coordination between input output devices that is uh, now this is the time to input data this is the time to output data likewise they control the communication between input and output devices right in addition to that they directly control the direct the operation of the process right okay and basically we can say it coordinate the fetch decode execute cycles of each instruction right 
So there's a, a cycle called fetch, decode, and execute, right? So this is controlled by or coordinated by the control units. And then next one is arithmetic logic unit. Let's see what is the purpose of arithmetic logic unit or we call ELU. Actually, ELU is a digital circuit that perform integer arithmetic and logical operation, right? So ELU is a digital circuit that perform arithmetic and logical operations, right? So arithmetic operations are same addition, division, likewise, those are arithmetic operations. So what are the logical operations? We heard that there are operations called AND, O, right, and XOR, likewise, there are some logical operations, right? Okay, so that's about the uh, ELU, uh, arithmetic logic unit, right? And then next part is registers. Now we know there are three main components, control units, ELU and registers. Right, so we have already discussed the main two parts, ALU and the control unit. The uh, rest one is registers. So registers are the small amount of memory associated with the processor or central processing unit. Right, so it used to store data to be operated. Right, so basically registers are used to store data to be operated, and it also access and use the main memory right with the computer right so it also access that is registers uh, access the main memory of the computer so basically we use RAM as the main memory in our computers right so this process of the central processing unit and the main memory are uh, linked together by buses right so main memory and the central processing unit link together by buses so Buses contain a set of parallel electrical conducting lines, right? So, but it means a set of parallel electrical conducting lines. So, I told you that the control unit coordinate the fetch decode execution life cycle. So, what is fetch decode execution life cycle? Let's see. Okay, first one is fetch. So what is meant by fetch, right? So fetching means control unit loads at the instruction at the next instruction to be executed, right? So fetching means the instruction uh, loads the instruction to be executed, right? Fetch it, and then at the same time the we have to load the data element from the main memory to the register right so the fetching uh, phase control unit loads the next instruction to be executed and the data elements from the ram to the registers right so for example so if you take a simple uh, say uh, operation let's take say 10 plus 15 10 plus 15 so in here in here uh, both these uh, 10 and 15 so these 10 and 15 are called a data so this is data right so this is the instruction so this, these are two instructions that is addition and assign this answer to say a particular uh, variable called a so these are data elements so these are uh, data elements so these are operations so these are data elements so these are called oper operations these are operations, right? That is, uh, uh, take the addition and assign to the another uh, memory location, right? So, control unit loads the next instruction to be executed and the data element from the uh, main memory to the register. So, that's what we call it fetch and then decode. So, what's meant by decoding, right? So, decoding. So, even this is uh, uh, operation, so these are not keep or they are stored in the main memory as it is, right? So these are these operations. So let's take addition, right? The addition. So there are a, a set of or the binary number sequence. So let's see a binary number sequence is like this. So this is addition, right? So 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 basically in this uh, uh, fetching phase. The control unit 
load the next instruction to be executed. It, it is something like this, right? So, actually, the processor do not know uh, what is this instruction. Then, the decoding phase, decoding phase, control unit interprint the instruction and find out what to do, right? Decoding means control unit interpret, all right? They understand or they, they interpret what is this operation. Ah, this is adding, right? Or in other case, that may, may be, uh, I'll say, multiplication. Likewise, they interpret the operation. So they interpret the instruction and find what to do, right? In execution phase, they execute the uh, uh, this instruction according to uh, interpretation, right? So in execution, that is control will send the relevant signal to the ALU, right? Arithmetic logic unit to perform the operation, right? Execution means control unit send the relevant signal depending on this uh, interpretation of the decoding phase. Uh, to uh, send the relevant signals to the ALU to perform the operation. So that's what we call execution, right? And ALU perform the operation on stored data in registers and store the result back in the register, right? So depending on the uh, operation, ALU perform that operation and store the data in registers and the stores the result or the information back in the register, right? So that's what we call execution, right? In execution phase, uh, ALU uh, performs the operation, right? So that's it, right? So you must have a basic idea about this fetch decode execution cycle, fetch decode execution cycle, right? So fetching means uh, load the instruction to be executed and load the data. Decoding means interpret this instruction, that is what to do, right? In execution means uh, uh, control and send the relevant signal depending on this instruction to the ALU so that ALU can perform the operation. Then the ALU perform the operation over the uh, data which are in registers and uh, send the information or the result back into the registers and later on those uh, results uh, are transferred to the main memory and then those uh, uh, results can be uh, stored in a secondary storage as a file or put in the uh, output device right monitor okay so that's the basic idea behind the fetch decode execution cycle right okay then it say finally control unit copy the result back into the RAM, right? Okay. So that's about the fetch uh, decode execution cycle. Okay. Next one is system bus, right? So I told you that control uh, the uh, what you call the central processing unit and the main memory link with buses, right? So there's a bus called system bus, right? According to the one new man architecture, there are three buses are used to communicate between control central processing unit and devices right so those are control bus address bus and data bus right control bus address bus and data bus like this right so the central processing unit link with the main memory using these buses in addition to that the central processing unit link with the input output devices right through these buses right control bus address bus and data bus all right Next one is, uh, actually that is the basic idea about the architecture of our computer, right? The next one is a types of computers, all right? The, there are uh, several types, mainframe computer, supercomputer, personal computer, and then, you know, uh, laptop computers, or laptop or uh, embedded computers, right? So these are the main computer types that we have. Okay, let's take one by one, the mainframe computer. So these are very big computers which we have several decades ago, right? So they are powerful, expensive computers used in the uh, background by most large organizations, right? So actually these computers are used by the large organizations, right? Like this, right? 
the supercomputer actually an extremely fast computer which can perform a thousand or the millions of instruction per second supercomputer means a computer which can perform a thousand or the million number of instruction per second right so these are used uh, by uh, the military purpose or the space traveling or the weather forecasting purposes all right and the basic idea of supercomputing is a computation by many processors many processors on a common task all right that is the uh, it has a particular task the task is assigned to the a number of processes a number of processes right so this is similar to situation where many people cooperate to accomplish a task which is impossible for one person to do it right that is if there is a one particular task right so instead of assign one person to do that so we can assign a number of people to do that uh, same task right okay right so these are the super computers and then next one is personal computer or we call pcs right so these are the uh, relatively inexpensive computer designed for individual users right so you know these things right so i'm not going to explain uh, more details in here right actually in ibm invented the uh, pc by the way back at say uh, 1981 right so this is called personal computer and then on, next one is laptop and compact computers right so these are the main feature of this laptop is the portability right so portable and means we can be in the uh, remote areas and then uh, work with the laptop right and then the another uh, the basic feature is it can run on batteries as well as main power right so that means it don't have a power uh, supply right so without power supply we can work with the uh battery right okay so uh, they are uh, special uh, they use a special screens rather than the uh, traditional uh screen right so the phantom computer are even smaller than the uh, laptop computers right so you know these things right and then next one is embedded computers right so what's meant by embedded computers all right so Embed computer means uh, the computers that are dedicated to perform a specific task. All right, so computer that are dedicated, all right, to perform a special task. All right, so it may be a washing machine, or it may be a uh, say air conditioner, or it may be a uh, modern vehicle. All right, so in that uh, systems, so inside those systems there are some uh, uh, units. Which are dedicated to perform specific tasks, right? So, for example, in uh, modern uh, vehicles, right? So there is a, a special uh, electronic unit for uh, brake system, ABS, right? So that is designed for uh, uh, perform specific tasks, all right? So in, in in a modern washing machine, there are some special units which is controlled the say uh, the power of the washing machine and then the speed of the uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, what you call that uh, rotations all those things controlled by the uh, particular units right so that unit is called embedded embedded unit or embedded computer that is that unit is dedicated to perform a special task right okay and then we come to the computer storages computer storage so first one is a memory unit memory unit what is memory unit actually a memory unit means a amount of data that can be stored in a storage unit right amount of data that can be stored in the storage unit so the storage capacity are expressed in terms of bytes right the storage capacity are expressed in terms of bytes so what is byte or what is a bit first one is bit bit means a binary digit binary digit so we know in binary number system we have two uh, symbols or two digit zero and one right 
So uh, this is a binary digit, right? So binary digit. So simply we take B from binary, IT from digits, and then we call this is one digit, one digit, right? Okay. Uh, representing a passive or active state of computer in an electric circuit, right? So this is this chart uh, or represent using electrical uh, voltage actually, right? Okay. So the smallest measuring size is bit, all right? In memory units, the smallest measuring size is bit, all right? So this is how we go it, right? So eight bits call uh, one byte that means uh, any number of uh, here may have any number of bits but if you take a four into that is eight bit right eight bit then we call this is one byte right so this can be zero one one zero right one one likewise right so this is in here we have eight bits then we call this is one byte one byte right this is one byte so, uh, 8 bits we call 1 byte, then 1024 bytes. 1024 means actually 2 to the power 10. 2 to the power 10. Then 2 to the power 10 byte we call 1 kilobyte. 1 kilobyte kb. Right? Then another 1024 kilobytes we call 1 megabyte. Then 1024 megabyte we call 1 gigabyte. 1024 gigabyte we call one terabyte then 1024 terabyte uh, equal to one petabyte right then you must have ability to convert the byte into bits or bytes into kilobytes or megabyte likewise so i'll take example let's take say 4 gb 4 gb you may uh, have seen this 4 gb 4 gb ram likewise right so in 4 gb how many bytes are there right you know 4 is uh, 4 GB. GB means so gigabyte. So 1 gigabyte equals say 1024, 1024 megabytes. Right? So 1024 megabytes. Right? Okay, then 4 into 1024. 1024. So 1 megabyte equal another 1024, 1024 kilobytes. KB. KB. Then one KB equal thousand twenty four kilo uh, sorry uh, bytes. All right. So twenty four here thousand twenty four. So one kilobyte. Right. So one kilobyte equal another thousand twenty four bytes. Thousand twenty four bytes. Like this. Right. Then four means so simply we can say 4 means 2 to the power 2, here 1024 means 2 to the power 10, here 1024 means 2 to the power 10, here 1024 means 2 to the power 10, right, so these are bytes, these are bytes, right, so all together you can say here 2 to the power 10, here 2 to the power 10, here 2 to the power 10, right, so this according to the same base of the indices, we can uh, take the summation of these powers. Then 2 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, that is 2 to the power 32. 2 to the power 32 bytes. Right? So that is a 4 GB memory. In terms of bytes, we can say 2 to the power 32. Right? 2 to the power 32. If you want, you can convert it to the bits because 1 byte means 8 bits. If you multiply this one by 8, then that number of bits are there. So likewise, we can convert uh, uh, any memory unit into the smallest units of the uh, memory unit, right? Like uh, we can convert memory units, right? Okay. So that's about the memory unit, right? Okay. And the next one is hierarchy of the storage. Hierarchy of the storage. So, so this is the hierarchy. Primary storage. So what's meant by primary storage? Primary storage means a directly accessible to the central processing unit. There is a storage which are directly accessible, right? To the CPU, we call those are primary storage. For example, main memory. 
So main memory can be directly accessed by the central processing unit. All right. Secondary storage. Secondary storage means that data uh, those are not directly accessible by the CPU or the processing unit. All right. So for example, hard disk. All right. And then thirdly storage. Thirdly means it involves a robotic mechanism to uh, uh, mount and dismount the mobile mass storage. For example, our uh, flash drive, the pen drive, right? We use some kind of, uh, we, we call plug and play devices, right? So we can mount uh, as we wish, and then we, if it is not used, we can dismount it, all right? And the next one is offline storage. That means if you have some uh, documents, we can get a printout uh, and then uh, keep on a, uh, another location, right? Those are offline storages, right? Those are called offline storages, right? And then next one is uh, what are the main characteristics of memory, right? The characteristics of memory. Okay, uh, in here actually we have to discuss uh, two main characteristics, right? So the first one is volatile memory, volatile. So volatile means it, it requires a constant power to maintain storage, stored information, right? So it is required a constant power to maintain the stored information. We call that is volatile memory, all right? So that means if it is, uh, if there is no a constant power supply, right? Then we lost the uh, memory, right? It says a uh, lose, uh, lo locks its data when the power of the computer or the computer is turned off, right? So without constant power supply, we can't maintain stored information, right? So that's what we uh, call volatile, volatile. Then the fastest memory technologies of today are volatile memory storages, right? So that means they need a constant power supply to maintain uh, stored data or information, right? So for example, RAM, RAM is volatile memory, right? And the next one is non-volatile memory, right? Non-volatile memory. Non-volatile memory means we are retain the stored information even if it is not constantly supplied uh, electrical power, right? That means it is not required constant power supply to maintain a stored information. It is not required, right? So it is suitable for long-term storage of information, right? So the non-volatile memory is suitable for long-term storage of information, right? So for example, hard disk. Right, so hard disk is non volatile memory storage. Right, okay, those are the two main characteristics of memory volatile memory and non volatile memory. Right, okay, and then next one is random access memory. Right, so what is random access memory or RAM? Actually, RAM is the working memory of the computer. Right, so RAM is the main working memory of the computer. So that is when boot in the computer operating system is loaded to the uh, main memory or to the RAM from the hard disk, right? So when you switch on the computer, the operating system is loaded to the RAM from the hard disk, all right? So, so without RAM, we can't work with the computer. That is, a RAM is the execution memory. That is, uh, uh, if you open particular application, that application is loaded to the main memory. Right, so that application is loaded to the main memory. Usually, applications are held on secondary storage devices. So, usually, computer uh, applications uh, uh, are stored in a hard disk. And then, when you open that application or when you access the application, that application is loaded to the uh, main memory or RAM uh, from the hard disk. Right? Okay. The next one is a read-only memory, or we call ROM. What is ROM, right? So ROM is a special type of memory, right? Actually, there is memory chip from which existing software can be read but not ignited, right? That means we can't we can't written uh, instruction to the uh, read-only memory. 
but we can read instruction from it wrong all right so there are special uh type of forms we call from biostip and uh which contain read only software all right so rom chip is programmed during the manufacturing time all right so rom chip is programmed during the manufacturing time right and the network card and video cards also contain rom chips right okay the rom contains the program uh, uh con <coughs> containing the basic functions that the computer should execute when the computer is started right so in rom or the in bios rom or the, the rom contains the program right the basic functions or we call basic input output system or bios by the basic functions that a computer should execute when the computer is started right so when you switch on the computer basically operating system is in on the secondary storage device that is hard disk right then the uh, operating sy system should be loaded in the main memory right so those uh, instructions are available in this kind of ROM chips right okay that is the computer should execute when computer is started so the basic functions all right okay and then this is the comparison between ram and rom so ram is temporary memory right so as i told earlier that is volatile memory that is the content are lost when power is off right so whereas rom is permanent memory that is non volatile that is non volatile memory that is the content are not erased or content uh, 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 not loose right that is not lost uh, when power is off so ram is read and write memory that means we can read uh, the information in ram and then we can read into the ram right but the rom is read only memory right uh, ram is working memory that is during the execution time the data and the information are, are loaded into the ram but rom is used to store startup instruction right or we call booting instructions right how it is boot how it is load the operating system from hard disk to uh, main memory likewise those instructions are uh, stored in rom right so the rom used to store startup instructions or we call boot up instructions right so so uh, if, if it is uh, volatile then what will happen the computer cannot be started because we need a constant power supply to maintain this information in rom since this is non volatile these instructions are not lost even power is off so that's the difference between ram and rom right okay and the next one is video memory video memory or we call it graphics memory right so the picture that you see on your screen is a form of data and this is this data has to be stored in uh, somewhere or in a location right so the on the screen picture are held in special memory chips called video memory chips right so these pictures are held in a special memory chips called video memory chip right so these chips are usually located on video card right so these chips are usually located on the video card a modern computer will be supplied with several megabytes of video memory right so this is a video card right so this is the sample of video card okay and then next one is peripheral devices what is peripheral devices so any external object that provide input and output for the computer can be uh, called as peripheral devices right any of the uh, external object which provide input and output for the computer all right so there are three different types of peripherals we call input output and storage all right input devices output devices and storage devices are main peripheral devices right okay <laughs> let's take input output and storage devices right so before that the first of all we consider the and secondary storage devices what are secondary storage devices that we have 
right? So actually, uh, in earlier we discussed the uh, hierarchy of storage devices, right? The primary storages and the secondary storage, ternary and offline. All right, so I recall it. Primary means any storage device which are directly accessible to the single processing unit. Secondary means the storage devices are which are not directly accessible to the CPU. All right. Okay. Then the secondary storage devices can be uh, categorized into several categories. All right. So magnetic storage, actually the, the technology which is used in storage devices are key component to categorize these uh, categories. Right. Okay. The magnetic storage devices, optical storage devices, the flash memory devices, online or the cloud devices, storage devices, and the paper storages, right? So, uh, in magnetic uh, category, we have floppy disk, hard disk, and super disk, right? Zip disk, or the uh, tape cassette, right? So, those are belong to magnetic uh, category. And in optical category, we have the CD, DVD, right? Blu ray disk, those are all are belong to optical category. And then in flash memory, we have say memory cards, memory sticks, uh, flash uh, drives, all are belong to flash memory, all right? And in online and cloud category, we have cloud storage, network media storage, so those are belong to online and cloud. In paper storage, you know, the punch card technology and OMR technology uh, are the uh, technologies which are used in paper storages, right? So those are uh, used in earlier right okay let's say some uh, few uh, storage devices right so I'm not going to explain in details right so you can uh, get some this information from this met, uh, material on the note right so I just uh, I explain these things right so because most of you know these things right in top disk actually this is thin magnetic coated disk containing in a flexible or semi rigid protective general right so in here data are stored in tracks and sectors right data is stored in tracks and sectors all right so i'll explain tracks and sectors in, in, in the, uh, later right so in here a double side high density or 3.5 inch disk can hold uh, 1.44 megabytes of data right so a small amount of data can be stored in floppy disk all right so once the data is stored in a floppy disk it can be Right protected so by clicking a tab on the disk all right so once if you store the data in floppy disk we can uh, we can uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, uh, what called a switch right so by using that switch we can uh, keep those data as right protected mode all right so this will prevent any new data being stored or any old data being being erased all right so think you may have seen this uh, uh, this kind of floppy disk right so in here we have a special kind of switch which can be used to uh, uh, use this height protected mode right okay so in here actually yeah, in here here you may have uh, a switch right here or there right so you can uh, use this that switch to keep your uh, data as a right protected mode right okay Next one is hard disk, right? So you know hard disk. There is uh, this is it's uh, the uh, what you call main storage in our computer, right? So in here <coughs> uh, there are some circles on the uh, magnetized surface. The magnetic disk are known as tracks, all right? So the tracks on the disk surface are divided into invisible uh, segments known as sectors, right? So each sector store a fixed amount of user accessible data, right? So usually 512 bytes for hard drive and then uh, 2048 bytes for CD and DVD ROMs, all right? So uh, yeah, this is the image, right? So, so here, right? So in hard disk, right? So there is a one surface, right? So we can identify a number of uh, tracks. Right, so these are called tracks. Right, these are called tracks. Right, then one particular track is divided into uh, these kind of sections we call sectors. 
right sector right there's the track called the list surface are divided into invisible segments uh, known as sectors so this is one track right so this is one particular track all right so for example this is a one track all right so this is called track so number of tracks are there all right so this is a, a one track then in this track the track is divided into this kind of segments we call this segment a sector and this is another sector all right which is an outermost track right which is sector all right so we can use these sectors to store the data right so to take one sector right so we can uh, store this kind of uh, data segments right so actually the in, in data segments so there are two uh, main parts we call header and trailer right so in header section we can uh, have a, a information which are used to synchronization and in trailer section we have a, another data we call error correcting code right so in between header and trailer section actually so this is the place where we can store the data right so the same technology is used in floppy disk as well right so this is the second uh, technology used in magnetic disk uh, magnetic uh, uh, disk in our hard disk all right so actually in hard drives there are two uh, technologies are used so this is used in a magnetic or that we call hard disk drive and then uh, in addition to that there is another technology we call ssd or we call solid state drives right and then we have hard drives as well ssd and hdd right in ssd hard drives has no moving parts actually here in here we have moving parts that means uh, uh, there is a uh, so we head this there right like this right so so this uh, moving head is uh, uh, yeah so this is uh, we call uh, uh, translation into this direction right to left and then this hard disk rotate like this right so if you want to access this particular sector right so it will be uh, uh, rotate like this then it, when it's come to here uh, this uh, segment uh, let's see this uh, this sector can be accessed using this header right this header so if you want to access uh, this part this part right so then what we have to do right so this uh, header should be so this hard disk rotate into here here then uh, this section right so let's see this section this section will come to here right will come to here and then this header should be moving into the uh, left direction right this header move into the left direction then when it come to this hard disk this se uh, this uh, sector or this uh, segment come into here when it come to here this by using this header it can be accessed so now header is in here header is in here then when this uh, segment come into here by using this header it can be accessed right then this hard disk rotate in this direction all right let's say uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise in this in here we call clockwise direction hard disk uh, rotate in clockwise direction at the same time this header can be uh, uh, rotate or uh, can be uh, what you call moving to right direction or left direction right so both movings are useful to uh, for accessing data in hard disk all right but in ssd hard drive they don't have any moving parts all right then the less chance to breakage all right at the same time ssd hard drive use the flash memory which can be stored and access data much faster than hdd right so they, they don't have a moving parts therefore the power consumption is very low compared to the hard disk drive right and then these are this is easy to install in our computer right so that's about ssd uh, technique or solid state drive right okay so that's about the ssd versus uh, hdd right so in addition to that we can compare the access time right so i told you that ssd is very faster than the hdd right so so this is the access access time for in one millisecond in here it uh, goes to 5.5 to 8.0 right and then it says the random input output performance right so this is the performance in uh, ssd so this is the performance is hdd right so this is the comparison between ssd and 
hard disk drive, all right? And then this is the CPU power needed to a uh, hard disk drive. So 7% needed in SPD and 1% needed in SSD, CPU power, all right? And then energy saving, right? It says uh, this, uh, uh, the SSD consume uh, 2 to 5 watts, all right? So at the same time, HDD consume 6 to 15 watts, right? Because they have uh, some moving parts. Right, so I told you that hard disk drive moving and same time that header is also moving. All right, then the reliability and the input output request time, right, and the backup backup rate, right. So you can compare these uh, parameters in SSD and hard disk drive. Right, so okay, that's about the comparison between SSD versus hard disk drive. Right, okay, and the next one is magnetic tape. Magnetic tape. Actually, in here, the magnetically thin coated piece of plastic wrapped around wheels capable of storing data, right? So magnetic tape, they use a thin coat piece of plastic thick wrapped uh, around wheels capable of storing data, right? So the tape is much less expensive than the other storage medium, right? Some of you, some of you have may, uh, seen this uh, magnetic tape, right? In earlier, we used this, uh, we call that cassette tapes, right? So to storing uh, music, all right? So in, the, in those uh, devices, we use this magnetic tape uh, technology, right? So it is much slower solution that was typically only used for backup, right? So in, nowadays, we use these tapes for backup purpose, right? So these are the tapes, right? And then we come to the optical disc, optic, optical disc. So this is a metallic disc we, that use a laser beam for reading and writing purposes. All right, so in optical disc, we use a laser beam to reading and writing purpose, all right? So there are four kinds of optical disc, all right? So we call CD or compact disc read-only memory, right? CD-ROM or a compact disc read-only memory, right? So, in here, uh, it cannot be written on or erased by the user, right? So, you can only read the data on CD-ROM. And the next one is CD-R or we call uh, CD-recordable, right? So, we call write once, read many, right? So, it can be written to one time only, and but we can read many times. Right, so after writing to the disk, it cannot be erased by user, but uh, it can be read. Right, uh, it can be read many times without any problem. Right, so erasable optical disk that is can be written and erased and reused. Right, we call reusable disk. Right, so there are two basic types: uh, GDR or compact disk rewritable, or we call magnetic optical. So the next part is. Uh, Next type is DVD, all right? So this is similar to CDs, but have a greater capacity of say 4.7 gigabytes, all right? So next one is Blu-ray disc, all right? So Blu-ray reads out the HD DVD high definition disc format, all right? So this is the, uh, the what you call the summary of this uh, optical disc uh, solution, right? So they use a, a laser beam to read and writing purposes right okay and then in here we have some we call a lands and the pits right so these are called uh, uh, lands and then we have pits right so lands and pits uh, actually uh, they create these lands and pits uh, pits using the laser beam right okay so that's about the uh, optical disk and the next one is flash drives or flash uh, uh, pin drives right so here we have very high capacity portable devices and it can be plugged directly into the USB port and the present the uh, pen drives which are about thumb size have gigabytes of memory right so nowadays we have a pen drives which are actually about thumb size means that is uh, very uh, small in size and then even if it's small in size they have uh, gigabytes of scale memory right like this right so many you know these things and then next one is the memory card memory card so this is the alternative referred to the flash memory card 
and then used to store photo videos uh, the other data in electronic devices all right so this is uh, the age of memory card right then next one is the cloud computing right the cloud computing is very uh, popular topic in nowadays right so in here the services provided over network by a collection of remote servers all right in cloud computing the services services provide over a network by a collection of remote servers right so this is actually the abstract cloud of computer provide the measure distributed storage and processing power right so it can be accessed by any internet connected device running on a web browser right so that means so uh, i'll explain uh, some a uh, little bit more uh, than this uh, node right so because in nowadays this cloud computing is very popular right so actually in cloud computing we can uh, divide into three main section right so they uh, provide application as services or platform as services and infrastructure as services right so application as a services means in in cloud services we have uh, some application right we can use those applications uh, if you have internet connection so for example in nowadays we have a google services right so in google service we have a google docs right so we can use those google docs uh, without any application installation in our local computer right so we don't need those applications those applications are uh, st uh, stored or the installed in the google servers we can use those applications if you have a, a google account and the internet connection then we call that is application as a service all right and next next one is platform as a service platform as a service means uh, there are some uh, uh, software so the uh, databases we can store our data in those uh, uh, databases actually those databases are stored in not on, not in our computer right those are in uh, in a particular server which is not in our area right which is in a remote uh, a, 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 a server right which, which, which is in a, on a different location right so we can use those platforms platform means the operating system and the uh, hardware system right so the, basically we use some software right softwares but we use those uh, systems to store our data right so those uh, systems provide a platform then we call platform as a services all right so and the next one is infrastructure infrastructure means we can store uh, uh, or that we can use uh, the cloud services as an infrastructure infrastructure that means we can use the remote hard disk to store our data in that case we don't have an application we don't provide the application by the cloud services uh, we are provide the storages so in google drive we can store our documents right so in that case we uh, we are provide the infrastructure infrastructure that is in, uh, let's say hard disk right so we can store our data in google drive so in that case we call infrastructure as a service right so so these are the main three uh, services provided by the cloud computing application as a services platform as a services and infrastructure as a services right sometimes you may ask what are the main services provided by the cloud computing right so first one is application as a services second one a platform as a services third one is infrastructure as a services right okay that's about the cloud computing the next one is network storage media network storage media actually media is any audio video images or text used in a computer network like the internet like the internet so it almost always requires a, a computer to send and receive and a community of people to create and consume the content and it says actually the storage is provided by the network that means we can store our uh, data or the applications basically data in a uh, network devices 
All right. So we don't have a storage just in our local computer. At the same time, uh, we have uh, some uh, locations to store our data in our network. All right. So that's what we call network storage media. Next one, next one is optical mark reader, or we call OMR, optical mark reading. So it is a process of gathering information from human being by recognizing marks on document, right? So here can accomplish by using hard drive device that detect uh, reflection or limited light uh, transmittance on or through pieces of paper, right? Like this. And the next one is punch card. Right, so actually, punch card containing uh, several punch holes that were punched by hand or machine to represent data. So these cards allowed to store and access information by entering the card into the computer, like this. So these are called punch card or the punch card machine. And then next one is a memory hierarchy. Memory hierarchy. So this is the memory hierarchy. Right. So <coughs> In uh, bottom of the uh, hierarchy, we have offline storage, and then next to that we have a hard disk, right? And then we have a RAM, right? And then we have a cache, cache also a memory storage in uh, our processor, central processing unit, and then the topmost memory location, uh, memory uh, storage is registers, so we call CPU registers, right? So when you go to the upward side. So speed of the memory uh, storage is high than the lower one, right? So in, in this direction, the speed is high, right? So when you come to the uh, uh, cost property, right? Cost, this is very expensive, right? Than the uh, lower level storages, right? And then when you compare the size, right? So size is increased into the uh, downwards right that is the, the storages which are in the topmost of this uh, uh, triangle is very small than the at the bottom layers right so here it is a uh, very small 512 here we may have 12 megabytes right and then here if it is a hard disk or the sorry the, it will be the ram right so the so those are uh, very high scales right so if it is hard disk it may be 2 terabytes if it is a ram Maybe eight gigabytes, right? So, if it's a cache, that is say uh, twelve megabytes, right? If it's a, a CPU registers, maybe five twelve bytes, right? So that's why, uh, uh, that's how the, the what you call the size of the memory is changing in this uh, hierarchy, right? That is when you come to the bottom, the size is very large. When you go to the upwards, the size is very small, right? So. Register is part of CPU, right? So the cache is also uh, available inside the uh, CPU, right? And then RAM is associated with the uh, central processing unit, but the hard disk and the other storages are not directly accessible to the uh, central processing unit, right? So you may you must have an idea about this memory hierarchy, right? So how the speeds is changed, right? So when you come to the upwards, how speed is changed, whether it's increase or decrease so if you consider the cost right how this uh, cost is changing right so when you go to the upwards and downwards when you compare the storage size how it is changed right so when you go to the downwards storage is high when you go to the upwards storage is low when you go to the upward cost is high when you come to the downwards cost is low when you go to the upward the speed is high when you go to the downwards the cost uh, the speed is low likewise you must have an idea about this memory hierarchy all right okay the next one is actually the uh, another uh, picture of this memory hierarchy so you can just uh, refer this uh, image right so just uh, you can pause the video and then uh, refer this uh, image right so the cpu registers as uh, the topmost memory uh, hierarchy right so so this is directly accessible to the cpu right cpu uh, registers cache memory and the main memory right so all these are directly access accessible to the um, uh, cpu 
and then the cache memory RAM, right? So, and then we have a virtual memory and the physical RAM. So actually these are temporary storage areas, right? So that is these, these storage areas as uh, working as executing memory storages, right? So once power is off, so uh, all the data uh, in this uh, area will be erased or lost, right? So, so this is the permanent storage area, right? So in, in here we have hard disk drive and a removable disk, uh, ROM, BIOS, right? All are permanent storage areas or network storages, right? So these are not directly accessible to the CPU, right? And then the operating system also uh, held in this uh, secondary storage devices we call hard disk memory. And then in uh, <coughs> bottom of this uh, secondary storage devices we have input sources all right maybe a, a mouse keyboard all the, uh, from uh, bottom of this secondary storage device right right okay so that's about the memory hierarchy that's about the memory hierarchy okay and then next one is uh, input devices input devices so actually you know what's meant by this input devices basically we have a uh, any we call any device which, which can be used to input data to the computer we call input devices right the first one is a mouse actually mouse is a, we call a pointing device right so in, in in terms of size so this is a palm size device right so this is used to control the movement of the object on the computer screen we call this cursor all right so here we use the uh, mouse as a pointing device right so here i use the mouse as a pointing device right so we can i can point a particular a location of the screen right so basically we have a cursor or a pointer right so that's about the uh, mouse right okay and then you know <coughs> actually in here we have the uh, i'm not going to explain much more right so left mouse button right mouse button and then the scroller is there right so in mouse we have the ps2 mouse and the usb type mouse so mm -hmm. this is usb type mouse and at the same time we may have a uh, mouse which is working using the bluetooth right so likewise so the mouse now <coughs> uh, 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 so there's several uh, what we call versions so several types right okay and the touchpad is also acting as a pointing device so this is for pointing on a computer display screen right so this is actually alternative to the mouse so most of the time so this touchpad are available in laptop computers right so this is originally incorporated in laptop computers right so this is also being made for use to desktop computers as well right so works by sensing the use of finger right for movement and uh, downward pressure right Okay, so this is touchpad and the next one keyboard actually keyboard is the other uh, what you call uh, the main use for uh, entering information into the computer so this is the most common way of entering information into the computer so this is the main input device and then number of different types of keyboard including those special design to use say micro key laws right so you normally we use this uh, QWR ERT keyboards, all right? Actually, yeah. So this is the uh, what you call the order of this uh, key uh, range, right? Q W E R T Y. So this is the uh, uh, arrangement of this key, all right? So this uh, one version, right? The most commonly used version. The name uh, for our computer keyboard comes from the first six letters in the uh, top of the uh, alphabet row in keyboard right that is the arrangement of keys right okay so now you know uh, this is the arrangement so this is the arrangement of keys right so in here we can identify several uh, uh, categories of keys so this is uh, alphanumeric keys right so this is a type of keys and then here we can have say function keys right function keys and then so these are called control keys and then these are called uh, navigation keys navigation keys here we have a, a numeric uh, number pad or a keypad right so likewise keyboard can be uh, group uh, using this uh, operation so the features of keys right okay and then next 
input device is scanner scanner actually a scanner is used to uh, read text or images printed on a paper and translated uh, the information into a form that computer can use right so okay so this is the uh, what we call animation of uh, how this printer is working right so this is the uh, first scan image all right okay and the next one is a digital camera versus a webcam or the uh, web camera uh, actually digital camera stores image digitally and once the picture has been taken it can be transferred to the computer system and then we can edit using uh, graphic softwares and print it in webcam or the web camera so this is the camera or the, a video camera usually attached directly to the computer right so it can be also you use take digital images and transmit them over the uh, internet right and this is widely used for uh, uh, chatting to the internet and then to do the uh, seminars and nowadays we use this for the this kind of uh, technologies like zoom microsoft teams likewise right so this is actually uh, attached to the uh, our computer right okay so the next one is microphone you know this is uh, a device which convert the sound into the electric voltage waves or signals all right so this is also uh, another input device right and the next one is output devices what are the output devices that we have the main thing main output device is monitor right so actually monitor is a visual interface visual interface with the computer so mainly three uh, there are three uh, two types of monitor right crt lcd and led monitors actually number two three types of monitor all right sorry for that all right so here we have uh, three type of uh, uh, mon uh, monitors right so crt as lcd and ldd nowadays we use led monitors right so so in here uh, visual display unit or we call vdu display images and text right so those are then made of the small box of colored uh, light called pixel right in uh, monitor we have a, a small blocks of color light color dots we call pixels right actually the resolution of the screen improve as the number of pixels is increased right so if pixels or the number of pixels are increased the resolution of the screen uh, uh, will be increased all right so uh, let's take these uh, types of monitors uh, crt monitors so crt means we call cathode ray tube right so the, this monitor tube is glass tube tube and in one end we have an electron gun and then the electron gun project three beams rgb or the red green blue uh, beams so the display surface coated with phosphorus and when the electron beams strike the coating it will it goes with the particular color like this right so this is the electron gun this is electron gun uh here this electron gun project with three beams red green and blue right so this gun uh, project this uh, uh uh electron beams into this kind of surface right then it will produce it will produce a color dot right so uh, depending on the what you call intensity of this red green and blue it will produce a particular color all right okay so that's about the uh crt monitors so here we have cathode in here we have conducting coatings right so d right so c is anode right so in here we have uh, d right so in here we have uh, phosphorus coated screen so this is the screen right so these beams are pro projected to this screen then it will produce a, a particular dot a color dot and then we have lcd monitors so lcd stand for liquid crystal display so this is used in digital vouchers and many portable computers right so here we have a low power consumption when considering to the crt monitor and it also, also it has uh, excellent text constructs constructs than the crt right so in here so by comparing to the crt the contrast is excellent 
means LCD monitors, right? So like this. And nowadays we have LED monitors, right? So an LED display is a flat panel display. So in here we insert an array of LED or light emitting diodes as a pixel for video display, all right? So in here capable of providing general illumination in addition to visual display, right? So like this. So by comparing to the CRT, the power consumption is very low in LED monitors, right? And then next one is uh, uh, printers. Printers, actually there are several type of printers are there. Uh, the first one is we call inject printers, inject printers, right? So in here in inject printers, they uh, tiny drops of ink onto the page to create an image. They are uh, uh, what you call drops at tiny uh, ink onto the paper to produce image, right? So that uh, technology in inject uh, printers. So in here, capable of providing high quality print, which almost matches the quality of the laser print, right? I'll come to the laser print in later. Right, and then it has a resolution of say 300 dots per inch. Right, so this is the uh, image of uh, inject printers. So in here we have uh, time drops of ink to produce image. Right, and then next one is laser printer. In here, uh, laser print is print very fast and they supply cartridge for a long time. And in here we have a uh, color laser printers, which is the same. Uh, uh, toner based printing as laser printers so but that they combine four different toner colors right then the color laser printer can also be used as a regular black and white laser printers as well right so in here the uh, special thing is the uh, what you call the quality of the uh, printout is higher than the uh, other printers right and then next one is impact printers or we call dot matrix printers right so the earlier one that is inject and the laser in inject and laser in inject printers uh, they uh, uh, drop the uh, tiny drops to uh, using ink in laser means they use laser beams to print in, in impact printers impact printers use a set of closely spaced pin and ribbon to print it all right so this is the same technology used in uh, typewriter all right so impact the page in the print character like typewriter you may have seen the typewriters right in typewriters they have a header right so the or we call we have a uh, uh, hammer right so that hammer is a strike on the paper right then it will uh, uh, print a character all right so that technology is used in impact printers right there there is a collision between hammer and the paper right so in just impact the page to print a character like a typewriter so this is commonly used for printing in noises such as orders and then uh, in various uh, locations right and then next one is thermal printers thermal printers where in here they print more uh, carefully uh, here the the thing is this is uh, very faster than the impact dot matrix printers, right? So this is uh, very faster than the dot matrix printers. Then they also they are also smaller, right, and they consume less power, making them ideal for portable and retail applications. And nowadays these are very common in, uh, in uh, when you uh, have say uh, when you go to the uh, say. Uh, filling station filling stations right so they have this kind of printers right so uh, in voucher printing and then point of sales uh, systems right they have this kind of uh, thermal printing technology right okay and then in think in that uh, bus ticket right so when you have the, the, when when you go to that uh, what you call filling station we have this kind of printers and then uh, Actually, they use uh, this kind of printers in uh, what you call printing the bus tickets, right? Okay. And then next one is floaters. This is also important, right? Floaters are important because uh, actually, uh, 
so uh, in other printing uh, purposes uh, we don't need uh, accurate uh, what you call uh, measurements but we need accurate measurements in when you drawing uh, when you have a, a, a what you call drawings right so like uh, plan building drawings right in those uh, uh, cases we need accurate measurement so uh, in process they use a large scale printer that are used very accurate at reproducing line drawings right so it is very accurate at reproducing line drawing so this is this for a special point of plotters right so basically in drawing in build, building or the building plan drawings uh, they need uh, very accurate uh, measurements in that case we can use plotters right in that case we can use plotters commonly used for technical drawing such as engineering drawing or architectural blueprints right so due to this uh, uh, accurate reproducing line drawing they use plotters for uh, drawings right to take uh, to take the print out of drawings right okay so that's about the uh, printers and then next output device is head pod head pod so actually the pair of small loudspeakers or less commonly as a single speaker uh, and then this is held uh, close to user uh, ears and connected to the single source right so you know these head pods right so i'm not going to uh, explain these things right so that is uh, another output device actually the, here we use output device especially output the sound right and then next one is uh, speakers this is also output sound right and then next one is multimedia projector right actually the projector uh, simply project an image on a screen all right so the multimedia projectors can be configured to project a computer video signal right so this is designed for almost very every application level of quality and the size of audience especially the size of audience right okay and then uh, now this is very important now. that is input output port and the connectors right so I just uh, uh, speak, uh, what you call explain uh, quickly input output devices because you know those input output devices but in here uh, we have to know what are the main ports and connectors right in computers right so what are the ports what is port right so port used to connect external devices to the computer basically port is used to connect external devices to the computer connectors actually connectors used to connect the external device to the computer through the port right so it's used to connect the external device to the computer through the port right port is used to connect the external device to the computer okay so these are the main ports that we have right we call ethernet port a parallel port and then these kind of game ports microphone and line in audio ports and we have the serial port COM1 and COM2 ports and we have a USB port, a PS2 port, so these are called PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. So these are the main ports that we have. Then these uh, ports can be uh, categorized into several categories. We call serial ports, the first one is serial and then parallel port. And then we have a universal serial bus port, we call USB port, or PS2 port, infrared port, Bluetooth port, right? So likewise, we can categorize these ports ports into several categories right so so this is ps2 port so this is ps2 port keyboard so this is ps2 port for mouse and these are usb ports so this is ethernet port so this is serial port this is a, a vga port right so this is printer port and then these are game ports and these are audio video ports or so speaker line in a micro one port so likewise we can categorize uh, these ports into several categories right and then this is a serial port right so let's take this uh, category one by one the first one is serial port in serial port uh, transfer data serially a bit in or out one at a time right and it takes longer time because data transfer serially a bit in or out one at a time therefore they take uh, longer time necessary to send 
a start bit before each byte of data and a stop bit after each byte of data because so when a data are, are transferred serially right so they have to specify this is the first bit or this is the starting bit and this is the a stop bit in each uh, data segment all right so otherwise uh, the data cannot be uh, identified uh, properly so usually this is known as communication port or com port right or rs a 22 c port right usually usually we use com port right so in here come in the form of 9 pin or 15 pin male connectors right so in here uh, they used to plug devices like keyboard mouse or modem as well right so in serial port so the main thing is data transfer serially and you have to specify starting bit and stop bit right so that's about the serial port execution and the parallel port in parallel port it can send or receive eight bits at a time right so that is data can be transferred parallelly right so it says transmit data parallelly it comes with 24 pin female connectors in serial port we have male connectors in here we have female connectors so it's used to connect printers cd drive hard disk right so these are parallel ports right so here we have a female connectors right and then next one is universal serial bus or we call usb port so generally used for pen drives scanners cameras even uh, nowadays we use mouse keyboard uh, printers as well right so this is usb port you know this and then next one is ps2 port in earlier keyboard and mouse are connected to the ps2 ports right so like this right keyboard and mouse and next one is ir port infrared port right so it's here it sends and send and receive ir or infrared uh, signals ir signals in also transmit or uh, the uh, transit the transit and the transmitter and the receiver right so here Actually, IR or the IR signal can be used in short distance, right? So this is uh, mainly used in TV remotes and the music systems, right? So even uh, we can use this signal uh, system in our computers as well, right? Okay, and then uh, we must have uh, this kind of a uh, uh, receiver, right? And then Bluetooth. Uh, actually, uh, Bluetooth means the wireless protocol used to exchange data from fixed and mobile devices right so bluetooth is a wireless protocol this is used to exchange data from a fixed and mobile devices right and this here uses a radio frequency right so there should be a bluetooth receiver and then we can uh, send bluetooth signals right so basically we can use the bluetooth signal for our mouse right and all those devices right and then transfer data from uh, uh, smartphone to computer like this right okay so that's about the uh, what you call the ports of uh, computer the main types of ports right okay then I'll come to the actually that is the uh, end of the hardware section right so uh, in, at the beginning I mentioned in computer system there are main three components hardware software and liveware right so then we come to the hardware and then we divide, discuss the central processing unit and the uh, what you call uh, the purpose of the CPU or processing unit and the main components of the CPU and then I'll come to the store uh, what you call that uh, uh, memory characteristics and then storage devices input devices output devices and types of ports right so there is the summary uh, what we have discussed so far next part is software and then what are the types of software that we have right software you know uh, what's uh, what are the software so what is software we discuss this right correction of executable programs you know what is meant by program program is a set of instruction then software is collection of executable, executable programs with proper documentation and configuration files right so software can be categorized into system software application software and utility software application software can be further divided in package software and custom made software right so system software 
what is system software any software which control the operation of the computer and the other types of software that run on the computer we call system software what is system software system software means the control the operation of the computer by using system software we can control the operation of the computer and the other types of software which are run on the computer so by using system software we can control the operation of the computer at the same time we can control the uh, other types of software which are running on the computer right so for example operating system is system software right compiler is system software Assembler, translators, right? Actually, those are related to the computer, uh, uh, computer programming, right? So basically, we know operating system is system software. Next one is application software. Application software. Actually, the application software means the type of program or the software that you use once the operating system has been loaded, right? So that is on top of the operating system, we can use application software. So programs designed to perform specific tasks, right? So in here, application software uh, may be two types: package software and custom made custom made software, right? Okay, let's take those two. Package software. Actually, package software means the software pre-written by professional programmers that are typically offered for sale, right? So for example, Office package, right? So in here we use Office package. Right, so uh, under the office package, we have a word processing application. So this is useful for teachers, lecturers, uh, doctors, and all those professionals. Right? Okay, all those applications, word processing, spreadsheet, database, presentation, all those are come under the office package. So these applications are uh, useful for various type of professions: lecturers, teachers, lecturers, teachers, and then doctors. Right? Even engineers. Right? So this is for uh, commonly used software, package software, right? And the next one is custom made software. That is, a programs written for specific purpose, specific purpose, and for a specific organization. So, for a, for example, banking system. The banking system is useful for bankers and the customers. Those are not useful profession like teachers, right? Even if they have, if they have an account in that particular bank, they can use it, but banking system is specifically used for banking purposes all right so for example student registration system student registration system useful for or used by the students and the uh, the teachers right so that is not useful for the doctors lawyers those professionals because student registration system uh, focus specific users right that is that is developed Design and dis, uh, develop for specific users, right? So those type of software are uh, uh, called custom made software. Custom made software. So general purpose software are called package software. Specific uh, users or, or the design and develop for specific users we call custom made software, right? Custom made software. Okay, so that's about the two types of application software. The next one is utility software. Actually, the util software means they carry out the, all the day-to-day -day tasks in maintaining a computer system and its data files, right? So, for example, virus guard or the screen servers, right? They utilize the computer system, right? So, assume if you are if if your computer is uh, inf infected by the virus, right? Then the all the functions are uh, <coughs> what you call. Uh, Act as a malfunctions, right? So, by using the uh, antivirus software, we can utilize your system, right? We can utilize the uh, our day-to-day -day activities in uh, a computer, right? So, we can utilize the computer system. Okay. The next one is what is the operating system? Now we have discussed system software, application software, and the utility software. System software. We know uh, that uh, system software can be used to control the operation of the uh, computer and the other applications used in computer. And the next one is application software. Application software divide another two, package and custom made. The final one is utility software. So that's the summary of software types. Okay, then next code, what is an 
operating system. What is an operating system? So, operating system is the software program that enables the computer hardware to communicate and operate with the other software, right? So, operating system is software program that enable the computer hardware to communicate and operate with the other software, right? That is, operating system act as an intermediator, right? Intermediate application between hardware and the user, hardware and the user, right? So now, so this is the evolution of Windows operating system. You know this, right? So this, the, uh, there are some, uh, here we have some uh, Linux operating system, right? Including the CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, those are Linux platform, right? And then, you know, an operating system loaded to the main memory from the hard disk at what time? So when you switch on the computer, when you switch on the computer, operating system loaded to the main memory that is RAM from the uh, hard disk, right? And the operating system does the follow, uh, does the following on the computer. So these are the main jobs of the operating system. They control the computer hardware, run the computer programs, organize the files. So those are the main uh, job, uh, the main functionality of the computer, right? And then uh, a part of the operating system remain in the main memory until computer is turned off. That is the what you call the uh, uh, the main part of the operating system is always uh, uh, stored in the uh, main memory, right? Okay, the kernel part of the actually the kernel part of the uh, operating system uh, stored in a main memory during the working time, right? Okay. And then the type of the user interface used in operating system. So actually user interfaces let user communicate with the computer. There are two types, right? Uh, we call command line interface and graphical user interface, CLI and GUI, right? So this is command line interface mode. In command line interface mode, we have to, uh, keep, uh, we have to keep in mind some commands. Then if you want to do a particular thing, we have to use that uh, particular command right so without command we can't do anything right so uh, in here cli user has have to use keyboard command to use the operating system the user has to remember the command right so at the beginning all the operating system were running on cli mode right and even today some os give cli as a part of their system tool like in uh, linux operating system we have both uh, cli and gui uh, modules right and then this is a, a, a GUI the operating system here. This is a Windows 7, right? So in here, Windows 7 uh, GUI, so there are a lot of features are there. So we can use uh, this uh, uh, graphical user interface to uh, do the operation, right? Okay. And then uh, uh, in graphical user interface mode, right, so it contains the graphics and icons. And so commonly navigate by the using a computer mouse and can be used to invoke commands, right? Then the GUI was uh, first used on Apple computers, right? And GUI is very easy to learn and use uh, uh, as a user-friendly manner, right? So many of the modern operating system come with GUI, right? Especially Windows operating system, right? So in here we have some uh, versions, right? So this is the evolution of Windows operating system, right? So some operating systems support both GUI and CLI mode. As I told earlier, in Linux operating system, we have a GUI mode, right? And the CLI mode as well, right? Okay, so this is the standard operating system model or the layered architecture, right? So on top of this uh, layer, we have the hardware, that is general processing units and uh, main memory, RAM and input output devices. On top of the hardware, right, we have a software, right? So in software, actually, uh, <coughs> on top of the hardware, we have an operating system, right? On the operating system, we have an application software, right? On top of the operating system, we have an application software. That is, operating system installed in the uh, uh, hardware, the um, uh, secondary storages, right? So inside the operating system or the even application software is stored in a secondary storages application system 
software cannot be executing without operating system why right? because operating system is the system software uh, which control the operation of the computer and the application installed in that computer all right okay so this is the layered architecture and this is example these are the sample software so hardware you know uh hard disk motherboard uh, processor and the main memory ram and then this is example for operating system windows so this is for windows xp and then on top of windows xp we can install these application properties like edge uh, virus guard and then some programming languages so here we have the linux operating system and in here also we have application softwares like open office right ubuntu uh, linux uh, antivirus java uh, languages uh, programming language type likewise on top of the operating system we can have uh, application softwares okay the next topic is uh, computer backup and computer viruses computer backup and computer viruses right so why do we need uh, computer backup right so first of all let's say what is data backup so why it is uh, data backup is important actually uh, here important files are usually replicated in several places so what is data backup and why it is needed so first of all the what is data backup that is important files are usually replicated or saved in several places simply we call we save copy of the uh, file in several places so why it is needed because we can have a some uh, we have some kind of risk why or how so we have to minimize the bad effect of hardware or software failures and virus infections power failures and unauthorized access to data right so we can minimize this bad effect by using our data backup right so by using data backups backup we can minimize the bad effect from these kind of things right so that's why we need data backup all right so now you know what is data backup and why is it needed right so uh, there are a number of backup softwares right so backup software are used to data backup right so in, in, in our uh, operating system we have uh, default backup softwares right backup tools right in windows xp we have uh, this uh, backup tool and in windows 10 we have a file history option to backup right so let's uh, see how we can use these uh, options in uh, practical sessions and the backup program will skip currently using uh, files and backup up to data should be restored to be any use again right so this can be uh, generally be uh, this can generally be done using the same software that is used for backup or backing up right so backup file with extension so this one basic uh, or the, uh, the popular extension is .bpx right okay then the backup media so widely used backup media is so physically separated IDEO these kind of drivers right or that we can use floppy disk the zip disk or the compact disk right or uh, even the tapes magnetic tape right so magnetic tape also very popular in uh, backup media right okay so that's about data backup the next one is uh, computer viruses all right so i actually i summarize this uh, uh topic that is virus right so i'm not going to discuss viruses in detail all right so uh actually viruses are the small programs that are written to affect the computer by altering the way it works so there is a uh, uh, procedure uh, uh, or that there is a way uh, of working in computer by using computer viruses right we, we change this uh, 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 way right so that's why you say come uh, uh, program viruses are small programs that written to affect the computer program by altering that is changing the way it works right so different viruses are activated in different ways right the worst thing is that they can spread from one computer to another that's the worst thing right 
So over the computer network or portable storages, they can spread out, spread. So it's better to use antivirus software and update regular uh, to uh, minimize the bad uh, from the computer viruses, right? So the best thing is uh, use the antivirus software and update regularly. That's also important, right? And then let's take the structure of the virus. Actually, uh, the spreading module is there. That is the uh, under the spreading module, we define the method of spreading the virus. And then payload module. Inside the payload module, we define the uh, destructive action to be performed during the execution stage, right? There are two modules, spreading modules and payload modules, right? And then types of viruses. First one is virus, and then Trojan host, worm, right? So these are the main uh, some types of viruses. And then antivirus. What is meant by antivirus? So anti antivirus is protective software designed to defend your computer against the malicious software, right? So I told you that antivirus is a utility software. Antivirus is a utility software under the software categorization, right? So this is the uh, end of this uh, introduction uh, part, right? So actually, basically, what we have discussed in here, here, uh, first of all, I discuss some concepts, data, information, and then uh, what is ICT, and then what is computing, right? So those definitions are, are very important. And then uh, the computer system, then computer systems uh, can be categorized three main uh, categories, right? Hardware, software, and liveware. And then what are the main types of computers, right? Frame, uh, what we call uh, <coughs> supercomputers, personal computers, right? Mainframe computers, right? Those kind of types are there. And then we take hardware, software, uh, and liveware, right? And then a hardware, uh, section we mainly focus the uh, uh, central processing unit how it is uh, working and then the in, inside the processor there are three main components right a, a control unit ALU and uh, registers and then the uh, uh, functionality of this uh, each and every component what CU doing and uh, what CU stand for and then what, what is the purpose of ALU what is the purpose of registers and then we discuss fetch, decode, execute life cycle, cycle of fetch, decode, execute, right? So keep in mind those are purpose, fetch, decode, execute, right? Sometimes you will be asked MCQ or the, uh, some uh, yeah, MCQ questions from those uh, concepts, fetch, decode, uh, executing. And then the memory units, right? So how to convert kilobytes to megabytes, to megabytes to gigabytes. So if you are going to say, Four gigabytes. How to convert into bytes, right? Likewise, and then we discuss main uh, 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 peripheral devices, input, output, and uh, storage devices. In that case, uh, keep in mind such that uh, hierarchy or the hierarchy of the storage: primary, secondary, and tertiary, and then offline storage. And then the memory hierarchy, right? So how this memory hierarchy? Uh, is there right so and then features of this memory hierarchy right so that is also important right and then the, uh, the speed of the memory right so all those things are there speed and then the uh, uh, speed size right and the cost right speed size and cost right so it's better to uh, uh, rewind all those things right so memory hierarchy uh, so you will be asked the questions from those sections, right? So keep in mind uh, the the yeah this one, right? So how this is uh, the features of this memory hierarchy, right? So uh, I think uh, it's better to uh, uh, what you call read this uh, material again and again, and then uh, when you're doing uh, the uh, practical session, right? So uh, the the key thing is. Uh, you have to practice the uh, things, right? So otherwise, you can't have a uh, what you call better skill performance in a practical exam, right? Okay, thank you very much.